Welcome to the Academy of Photography. The broccoli says I look like a tree. The mushroom says I look like an umbrella. The walnut says I look like a brain. The banana says let's change the subject. I'm Christian Tudor and today I'm gonna share with you a very uh, simple tip how to photograph a waterfall, how to do long exposures during daylight. If you ever try to go for above a second with your camera during daylight, you probably notice that it's overexposed. And if you have ever seen those nice motion blur effects of a waterfall and you ask yourself how did they do it, a neutral density filter is the answer. Basically what it is, it's a piece of dark glass in front of your camera and that will limit the amount of light getting into it and that will allow you to use long shutter speeds during daylight. I'm gonna quickly show you the um, neutral density filter kit I purchased a few days ago. I made a small trip today and I was looking for some fountains or anything that has water movement in order to test it and get some nice interesting effects. This is my ND filter set. It comes with six filters and uh, with different values. On the left hand side you can see the solid ND filters. They come from uh, two stops, exposure decrease, four stops and eight, eight stops, the, dark, the darkest one. And also you can see on the right hand side the gradient ones. Basically those will help you to get uh, only the top part of the pictures a little bit darker. It's a very nice effect. This effect can be done in post-production very easily but this is the right way to do it so you don't need to depend on any softwares. Use this and you're gonna have a nice uh, darkened sky on top of your pictures. The set comes with a lot of uh, adapter rings for any lens size and it will come with an adapter for, for the filters. I'm gonna show you how easy it is to install one and I'm gonna show you a few examples. So basically what I need to do is to install a uh, adapter ring on the camera, on the lens obviously. My recommendation if you wanna go for one of these ND filters you should get a set because you can actually combine these filters. So if only one filter will not be enough for you to use a longer exposure than two seconds. I just mounted the adapter ring on the lens and this one is just the adapter for those square filters. And basically as simple as that, we just stick one, we just slide one filter in. After my trip today, I realized that only one filter is not enough. So this has the uh, ability to use actually three. So you can combine them as you can see fit. So in this case I have three different filters with three different values. I have a 2 ND filter, a 4 and an 8. That means a 14 stops filter. That means my exposure is decreased with 14 stops. That will give me plenty of opportunity to increase my shutter speed. I have taken today a few shots and I can tell you the best way to deal with it you have to do it in manual with the aperture at the minimum so what I shot was uh, the aperture 22 my lens is limiting the aperture to 22 and uh, even in this case I found uh, very bright situations that would not allow me to go above four seconds and what I've done was actually going for the lowest ISO the lowest I saw on my camera is 100 but it does have an opportunity to extend it to even lower so the ISO was actually 50, f-stop was 22 and the shutter speed was 4 seconds. Depending how I use these the shutter speed varied between 4, four seconds and 8 seconds probably you can't go above that but I can tell you that would be enough to give you the nice motion blur effect.
I believe this is a very cheap and nice way to do some very interesting uh, photographs. If you come up with something interesting, feel free to share them with the Academy of Photography website. I hope you enjoyed this video and until I see you next time, I wish you happy shooting. Mm -hmm.